Hey, Rehot, uh, what are all those uh, fireworks going off in the background? Yeah, it's quite a... What are we celebrating, Duncan? Uh, it is uh, exactly 10 years to the day today, he says as he holds up his beer there, uh, that we launched Tech Central. It's nice. our 10th birthday today. So uh, quite quite exciting. Um, it's been quite a decade. Yeah, 10 years. Well it's done. flown flown by. Flown by. And, uh, Wait, if you guys have a party, why the hell am I on the show? I mean, <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like the worst person to invite to a party. <laughs> we haven't even got birthday cake. We're really bad at planning around here. No, Duncan. Mm. Well, I, I mean, yeah. I haven't even got a beer today. I mean, really bad planning. Um, but uh, that person you can see in the middle, or if you're listening to the audio uh, version of this podcast, uh, the person you just heard chiming in there is uh, none other than Mr. Louis Dupasani, who is, what do I call you, the developer, the, the brains behind, uh, boot That's fighter? Just, there's absolutely no brains involved with making boot fighter, so <laughs> I think that'll be a bit of a stretch. <laughs> no, I'm just me. I'm, I'm the prime mover of boot fighter. Um, and then after that, uh, I guess... Um, Technically, I'm the CEO of the of the company making it, but that doesn't mean anything at all. I mean, essentially, I'm the art nerd and the animation nerd and uh, the production nerd. So I try and keep all the other nerds together and on course. But uh, yeah, everyone everyone is obviously the, the the king of what they're supposed to do. We have Gordon Laws, who is the captain of jokes and character acting and writing and whatnot. Um, we have Nikki, the the king of, of after hours tears into the into the jacuzzi of um, of development uh, you know despair, which we all bathe in <laughs> every week. Uh, I, I was gonna say I wasn't gonna say bathe in every like weekend or Friday or whatever, because every day is Wednesday if you're a game developer. And then there's Super Ciso who's our uh, He's just a guy, honestly, that I said like, you know, Nick was having a bit of a bad day. I said, look, are there any junior developers out there? And then he's the first guy that replies, like, all right, come. And he's brilliant, so he works for us now. And then Steve, who is Nick's partner, who's now making arcade machines and um, does a bit of audio and uh, just a bunch of fringe useful stuff. Wow, I gave you a long answer. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> long story short, I'm Louis, the, the, um, the, 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 the matriarch um, of, of, of this particular thing because the reason why I say matriarch is because there's a lot of nagging involved. I'm not saying that matriarchs are good at nagging. Just saying I am the mom, and I have to kill people with a shoe. I'm already well, painting myself into a corner, but hey, you know what? I'm incredibly unwell, so anything that I say that is um, is is untoward, just blame the cortisone. Duncan, I'm just going to mute my microphone. I think we got the show running already on its own. The show is oh. running. Yes. Oh right. Sorry. Is it because I'm just talking? <laughs> 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 no, it's good content. I say, okay. bring it. But Louis, thanks for joining us, especially since you've got a touch of the lurgy there. Um, uh, we uh, we hope this podcast doesn't kill you. What? Do, the, no, you know what? I was going to say something very inappropriate, but when you told me that this is uh, potentially family-friendly content, I'm just going to have to say um, it's the bubonic face sif, um, which is all like grown in the back of my eyes and my nose. <laughs> um, and it is now sprouting a colony, which will also then eventually turn into a smaller sub-game development company. Um, <laughs> that just sounds like a plot for a good game. But because it is it is diseased and terrible, it will exclusively make free-to-play mobile games, the thing that is now growing inside my face. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> free to play mobile. I think we probably just violated yeah. Apple's podcast uh, terms and conditions or uh, uh, with, that, uh, with that description, but... Uh, Let's carry really? on. It's not family friendly anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's make the most of it then. So what you do is that when, when you when you do the re-upload, you just block out this middle thing where my face is, and then whenever my voice happens, you just have that telecom um, holding music, and then it'll be fine. <laughs> that would definitely violate the Apple terms. That'll violate everyone that's ever had a telecom before. Yeah, in fact, um, we, we'd lose all of our listeners and uh, we'd never get them back again. Hello, <laughs> listeners. <laughs> Is Telcom still playing that atrocious music or have they changed it? I can tell you a Telcom story, right? Now, th Please this, do. Is what, th <laughs> this is now a wonderful, you know, like summary of, of, of the hellishness that is Telcom. So I think like everyone else, I had a Telcom ADSL line at some point and then, you know, air quote, t uh, cable theft. And, and you just kind of go, all right, well, how difficult is it to get this fixed? And they go, it's impossible. You know, there are, there, there are why are cable theft stealing bandits roaming the streets? It's basically Mad Max. You know, Kurt Russell's trying to get it under control, but can't. Um, so, so you eventually go, all right, I'll be, because I'm always a late adopter. I'm not currently. Anything. So I eventually got Fiverr, and it took me like six months to cancel that. But then magically, my ADSL came back on. 
<laughs> for about 30 minutes. <laughs> and it went away again. And our phone's like, a miracle has happened. The cable theft people have clearly had a, a redeeming moment. They put the cables back and then changed their minds and took it away. So like, oh, okay. Well, then clearly it was never cable theft in the first place, you bunch of so-and-sos. <laughs> yes, so-and-sos. That's a good way of describing them. So-and-sos. So and so's, yeah. We must dig out that telcom music. Uh, no, actually, we must. Yeah, we can no. put it on the shortcut key there for. Put it on the stream deck. Yeah. Uh, for loser of the week, we'll just hit the hit that and play the telcom music. Wow. You know. <laughs> not such a good idea, is it? <laughs> Please, no. Let's not go. <laughs> All yeah, right, so shall we? Shall we uh, get into the show, Rechot? Shall we? Uh, shall we do our uh, start our, officially? Our intro officially, and uh, then we're going to come back and we're going to talk uh, some more about Boot Fighter because I really no, hear not. <laughs> <laughs> down, pipe down, pipe down. Right, let's get started. I'm Duncan <laughs> McLeod. And I'm Rechard van der Baer. And this is Talk Central, episode 270 for the week starting 1 September. Yes, it's spring day, 2019. Talk Central is brought to you by Tech Central. Join our YouTube live stream on Sundays from about 1 p.m. And please hit that subscribe button. And on Talk please Central this week... hit the subscribe button. Thank right you. Now. Yes, Go immediately. Right now. Uh, on Talk Central this week, Telcom CEO Zipo Maseko launches an extraordinary attack on National Treasury. Also on the show this week, no Google apps for the Huawei Mate 30 Pro, an all-new Toyota and Lexus models the sold in South Africa are now coming with integrated Wi-Fi hotspot. Wait, 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 wait. So, wait, so an attack has happened. Did they come from the sky? Did they come, like, you know, with... with came from spot? Telcom Towers. Did they come from Telcom Towers? Did they are Telcom snipers, right? And it, <laughs> was, it, was it a bit of... I think we just came up with the idea for your next game. Yeah, sim, a Simcom. It'll be amazing. It'll be... And you get corporate sponsorship for it. Sounds fantastic. Attack on Telcom <laughs> Towers. <laughs> <laughs> but before we digress too much, we'll also be talking about Celsius uh, uh, putting the plug and hole, cell fixed LTE and... Of course, the man behind Boot Fighter is with us. Sunday afternoon. Well, there, are, there, there are many, there, there are many <laughs> peoples behind Boot Fighter. No, that way, that way. <laughs> <laughs> what are you looking for? <laughs> it's uh, uh, sun, Sunday afternoon. We're eventually going to finish this intro. <laughs> <laughs> no, never. <laughs> we are live streaming on YouTube, and it's and time to talk. It's time to talk about everything. Never mind technology. Right. Uh, I think Louis dead. Yeah. Right. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, he's not dead yet. Please stay alive until the end of the show. We, we want to hear. I was just going to see if my neck beard would sprout whilst talking about all of this clever nerd stuff that I don't have any any clue about. So. <laughs> <laughs> right, Boot Fighter. It's set in Pretoria. The characters look a bit like they're out of the East Rand, though. Why four ways? Why four ways? Because four ways is boots plus budget, man. Like I think that you could. Because uh, <laughs> if you go to you know uh, any corner of the fish shaped triangle, um, I, I saw a great sign yesterday that you know it said Boxburg, uh, Benoni, Brakpan, all in you know in a triangle. And like it doesn't matter where you go, you know you're going to get um, you're going to go to a bar um, and and then promptly have a fight. Um, the thing about four ways is that it's it's the aspirational end of book culture we, we feel. So that's where all of the you know the primo books, you know the book plus the the, uh, the 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 premium books. That's where they all go. The well-to-do to, books. The well to do books. And and it is somehow between let's say Midrand and Four Ways, this has basically made it impossible to escape um, Four Ways um, or or Joburg in general, which then leads to the old adage of Four Ways in. Mm -hmm. No, he's out. <laughs> 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 I mean, that's not my joke. That's somebody else's joke. But first I mean, time I've heard it. Around. That's just a joke. But first, we should maybe say, I mean, a little bit more about the game. I mean, Duncan, we haven't really introduced it in what this is. This is a platformer where boots fight. And if you haven't seen it at any of the expos, I mean, you certainly have missed out, right? Well, there's still expos coming up, so you know, you can, you can just. No, for sure, for sure. And uh, so, when is it uh, set to launch? Ah, uh, geez, that's a that's a very good looking question. Uh, thank you for asking it. Um, What's the answer? Are, is there one? We are, we are aiming for the twenty first of September. But here's the problem with saying anything ever is that because this is the first time we're doing this, and because we are incredibly small in regards to our development side, everything seems fine. But we have not seen the hurricane that is now coming from behind the mountain that we we don't we haven't been able to warn the villagers about yet. So if there's a, if there are no hurricanes, no tsunamis. No, no ESCOM, um, you know, uh, critical load shedding. No copper no, theft. 
no, no copper theft. You no know, attack no, from telecom towers. No, no, no telecom SWAT teams sending in you know, to make sure that people on fiber all get executed on the spot. Blah, 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 okay. <laughs> then everything should be fine for the 20-odd-ish uh, of, of, uh, of September. Um, we, 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 we're obviously launching with Steam first, but um, we are really hoping to get iOS and Android out within a week or two after that. But oh, obviously... Fantastic. It's obviously we, we we when we started making this thing we didn't we didn't think you know we thought it was a bit of a joke. Oh, sorry, my my name tag came off just in case people were interested. Um, <laughs> you know, have to uh, beep that maybe or or, or, or censor that. We, we were just doing it as a goof, you know. It wasn't it wasn't meant to be like all right, we're gonna make this game so we can make money. But now now that the thing is kind of spiraled out of control, now we kind of have to make money. So yeah, it's coming to all platforms eventually. But the Steam one is first, hopefully the end of September. What a long so are you timing this? Question. Are September. you timing this for the for Rage? Then I think Rage is happening around. It's September it? today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, crazy. But at least until then, if anybody's listening, just go to Steam and hit that uh, add to your wish list button, and you'll Please be notified. Please do that. And then yeah. buy and gift it to all your friends because this is going to be something it's not gonna, talking about. It's not going to be expensive either. I mean, like, we, we don't have illusions of grandeur going like, ah, oh, this is a AAA title or anything. We, we try to make the best game we can with with, with an indie size studio. So we try mm-hmm. to make a good indie, indie title um, and then we're going to set it at a good indie price. So please buy. Please support <laughs> Get rid of those stupid fireworks. I forgot it. I forgot them on the screen. There we go. There's some artwork. So in terms of, so for those of you that don't know what Bootfighter is kind of loosely based on and kind of where, where you guys' idea came from to where we are now, can you give us a brief one minute rundown? Oh dear, one minute. Um, okay. One minute, we're timing you right now. So I was working on another game called Django, and at that point we were making a lot of gaming stereotypes and you know how they would apply to the real world. And the one stereotype that we thought was very funny was Double Dragon. It could only be, um, let's say, based in Essex, uh, New Jersey, or Four Ways. And because we know Four Ways, we decided to do Double Dragon and Four Ways. <laughs> a game where you start... You, you, you Double Dragon and Four Ways, nice. Girl short skirt gets punched in the stomach by doing a machine gun, carried off, door opens, Lambo roars, two guys fight each other until the end, girls hanging on the wall, you fight everyone to the death, and then you fight each other until you get to be with her. That does not work in today's society, except if you're based in four ways. Boom, how do I do? Fantastic. That was the best answer to that question. So essentially, the, the, the whole kind of like two dudes fighting over, over a, a, a maiden, uh, a damsel in distress, is such an outdated motif. So the joke is, is that the motif only works if you live in a very kind of um, jockey alpha, let's say unwokey kind of um, ecosystem. So yeah, that's basically where, where, where the point of the joke came from. If you want any more kind of, uh, let's say locally cultural um, uh, uh, lore, then I can, I can happily assist that, but only if you ask for it, because I don't want to overstay. I welcome with these lengthy, long answers no, I, wanted to know, I wanted to know he did that brilliant voice uh, voice over in the trailer and we'll play the trailer in a moment but uh, the accents were captured absolutely perfectly who did that so most of the voices um is uh are, are done by gordon laws who also created the hard eddie character um before this game uh was um was birthed um uh, I phoned Gord and said, hey, do you want to make a game about dudes fighting in four ways? And I had this whole pitch. He goes, I'm in. And then he basically <laughs> a week later said, yeah, but of course, Hard Eddie is the main guy. And I'm like, can't deny that. And then um, we we had a joke about who could be you know, his pals. And there were a few, but the one that we thought was the funniest was Mod C or Mutbise um, Pele. God, I hope I said that right. Um, but the Mod C is a bit of a joke on a Model C accent um, because, you know, <laughs> like, like, like there's no cultural differences with boots, your boots, you are, you are the group of boots. Um, and, and that is done by a local comedian called Mo Matebe, who is super funny as well. So Gord, Gord will, will, will do these great lengthy improvs that are really funny. And then uh, Mo would just say this one little quip and it wouldn't even make sense most of the time. It will just kill us every single time. And how this is done is that we just improv. Mm-hmm. And then I take it back or one of the audio guys, Garth or Steve, will take it back. But in most cases, it's me when it comes to the marketing content. Um, I'll take all of it and then try and turn it into a trailerable length, um, mm. trying to 
stick it all together, uh, which is sometimes tough when it's improv. But yeah, I think yeah. Yeah, like like I think the trailer has been received quite well. So, uh, oh, the trailer's fantastic. The trailer's absolutely accomplished. fantastic. Yeah. Um, are, are you going to have cutscenes like that throughout the game? Um, oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Oh, if, brilliant. If we didn't do the cutscenes, this game would have been out like two months ago. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because you know, yeah. you got to be honest with yourself. You know, like this game. <laughs> where do you find the fun? And a lot of the fun is in you know, is, is in the voiceover. Mm. And in a beat 'em up game, you don't have a lot of opportunity for in-game mm -hmm. voiceover mm -hmm. um, because it isn't like role playing. It, 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 like it, it, it's not an exposition machine. It's just a yeah. case of you fight and it's funny. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so we have to do a lot of content in between um, to 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 get the joy of the game in, which is you know funny looking dudes with very skinny legs talking ridiculous nonsense <laughs> in that adorable Norwegian accent. Norwegian <laughs> accent, brilliant. And I loved some of the uh, some of the local landmarks. I mean, if you live in Joburg, you'll recognize them instantly, which I think They're just adds fictional. to the appeal as well. They're all fictional. Oh, fictional, yes. yes, yes. What was it, the, ro the Rolly Dodger or the, jo the Dodgy the Roller? Dodgy Joller. Dodgy yeah, Joller. Yeah, the Roller Joller, whatever you want to call it. Um, <laughs> It's no, I've seen a few places very similar. I love going to those places. And in fact, you know. Do you go out to roll? Are you oh, one of those people? I, I'm not a boot, but I like to watch, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Do you go in the corner going like, hey, Bree, they've got chicked out your bin, Bree. 50 round on the blonde, 50 round on the dark head. Uh, they're going to fight today. Wow, good thing it's spring day. <laughs> anyway, all your thing, secrets are out. <laughs> Cool. Well, uh, if you've got any questions for Louis, please join us in the chat room. I see a few few people have uh, joined us in the chat room already. Um, but yeah, please do fire away. So I'm going to I'm going to attempt to play this trailer. Um, uh, we were having some trouble getting the audio to work before we started, and I suspect uh, the three of us are not actually going to hear the audio, but I think it's going to go out live. So, so uh, if you, the listener, hear the audio, please give us some kind of um, cue, indication. Some, yeah, in the chat room, just let us know. If the audio is not going out, I'm going to have to pause this, but. Uh, here we go, chaps. I think we all have to keep quiet because this is uh, hopefully going to go out. Let's do it. Released at any time, but we are confident oh, no. that it will be soon. <laughs> That's the end of the, the video. Fight. Hang because on a second. Because Rewind. This is not a game. <laughs> no, actually, it is a game. Except mm. now. It Wire actually cost. is. It's actually a game. Rewind. Good job. Good, jo good job, guys. Good job. <laughs> good job. Now, this is all indie podcasting, all right? I'm sure you know. I'm sure you know. <laughs> Things go wrong. Laws and things don't happen. Anyway, it's about to restart, so I think. Uh, that's the last uh, few moments of the, which is probably broadcasting audio, so I'm probably talking right over it at the moment. All right, here we go. Sounds of birds chirping peacefully, square bracket, algebra. Always, hardest and tittest part of the whole of Johannesburg. Everyone knows. Hard Eddie, hardest and tittest oak in all of four ways. Hard oak, okay. hard oak. One night, out on the jaw with a new and very fine bennet. Shazata. I had to go and investigate whether an altercation had anything to do with me by dripping all the oaks involved. To detective. Satisfied that it did not in fact have anything to do with me, but I returned peacefully to the VVV VIP section all the V's, my brother. All the V's. Where I found my Bennett missing. Did you find her missing or was she missing? Did you find her? But who could have stolen her? Very good question, but... All we know about him is that he was apparently handsome and also very ripped. I promise it wasn't me, brother. Which makes him an alpha male and a threat to my dominance. I oath it wasn't me as at home with you, brother. Calling upon my best China, Mod C. That's me, brother. I will dedicate the rest of my life for the whole weekend. Long weekend. To retrieving my stolen Bennett and restoring justice and order to four ways. There's more to Boot Fighter than you could ever have imagined, but way more, way, way more. So much more. Maybe even three or four ways more. I see what you did there, brother. For example, there's a love story of a oak with himself. One man story. There's another love story of actual love. Heterosexual love. There's another love story of two bros who cement their friendship by cementing oaks in the face. It's a love triangle of violence, brother. Nightclubs, rugby stadiums, bars, gymnasiums, very busy traffic roads, and a ginormous inland rave with an ocean theme. Gentrification. Ah, uh, what else, Brittany? Hey, ah, uh, explosions. Boot Fighter, official release date. TBC, subject to change. Terms and conditions apply. We reserve the right to change the release date at any time, but we are confident that it will be soon. Very, very soon. Boot Fighter, because Mooring Oaks is not a game. No, actually, it is a game. Except now, it actually is. It's actually a game. Um, and I won't replay that last bit, but uh, the audio was going out apparently, and <laughs> very good indeed. <laughs> it's a bit weird. Fantastic so, trailer. But bit weird of us sitting here in silence while everyone else can hear it, but <laughs> we'll figure that out. The lip syncing was that good, though, that you could follow it. 
<laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> indie development, guys. Indie development. <laughs> <laughs> so more of more cutscenes like that coming in the game. I cannot wait to play this. Um, yeah, absolutely. Like some of them are about twenty five seconds long. Some of them are like one and a half painstaking minutes long. You know, which is fun to animate because, um, yeah. But I think it's kind of. Um, like, like that whole style was almost birthed out of uh, this weird, uh, you know, requirement that we need a lot of talking um, that is economically uh, easy to, to execute. Well, at least that's what I think. Um, so, yeah, if you like that cut to cut scene, we're going to have a lot more. I'm going to do one more before the game is up because, unfortunately, whenever you do a piece of marketing content, Mm -hmm. So like everyone's like, oh yeah, people dig it, or oh it didn't, we, 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 it didn't do as well as it should have, and then the, the inevitable conclusion to either one of those scenarios is like, we need more. Yeah, we need to yeah. do more of those. It's like, all yeah. right, well, ever suffering animator, we'll do some more. It's fine, guys. <laughs> <laughs> now I've got a, what? What do you think? I mean, quite importantly, what do you think is the esports potential for a game like this? Zero. <laughs> <laughs> Could do it in real life. Uh, spectator sport. No, I'm teasing. <laughs> but I mean, this is one of the few games that I actually enjoyed at the shows I've been to, to just watch other people play. Yeah, but also yeah, their okay. reactions to it is pretty insane. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. It, it is something we wanted to do for this game, but um, we have this lovely term called scope creep, which is like, okay, just, just know what the parameters of what you're doing. And then with the parameters, you can actually create a plan to execute. But there was one thing we wanted to do that was much more multiplayer focused. And... We, we're not sure whether that's going to be in the bootverse or um, not in the bootverse or just inside the actual boot fighter game. But yeah, yeah, the plan is there to do something that's a little bit more multiplayerable, which is not couch co op, if you know what I mean. And for mobile, I think that's a very important thing these days. Uh, we know multiplayer game on mobile games is certainly taking off, and uh, everybody's got access to the data in some ways. So having that ability can certainly work well for a game like this. Did you hear? The single drop of 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 Evno tears falling into the dream jacuzzi. <laughs> <laughs> when you said that, hey, we should we should really do some multiplayer on mobile. We do it. No, I it. mean I feel the pain. I feel the pain. I mean I can understand. It's not uh, easy, right? Well, I don't know. I just you know I just I just you know uh, come up with stories and you know art it up and throw it at people and go, hey, you know this moving picture, make it make it work, make it respond well to when people push buttons and get angry and push more buttons in once. Than they should. We had this problem with the arcade last year that uh, we didn't know uh, because we were obviously testing it on controllers and then we stuck it on a on a um, on a, one of those uh, arcade uh, control pad things, and we didn't know that if you pushed all six buttons at once, um, that it restarts the game. And we thought, oh, what's the odds of that happening? And then every single person who wanted to trigger a special <laughs> move was like, oh, just smashing the arcade into bits. <laughs> You know, boot fighting, boot fighters. Like, oh, it's Windows. How did that happen? You know, the ultimate button masher. Yeah, I know. That's a special move. Push all the buttons at once, and then you just kill the game. So yeah. <laughs> Anyways, I don't know how we got into that. Um, I blame the head cold. Anyways, next question. That could so, be an interesting Easter egg. You know, you should pop something up that uh, does it when people press all those buttons, except for restarting the game, obviously. Mm -mm. Easter eggs. <laughs> Easter eggs. No more. No more. Enough what was the creep? What was the Microsoft Office uh, app that used to have a flight simulator built into it? Was it Excel? Excel. Yeah. <laughs> Man, that was crazy. You press a combination of keys in, in, in Microsoft Excel in the nineties, and it popped up flight simulator in between your sheets, <laughs> <laughs> which was a bit bizarre. But um, but Louis, what, what are your uh, what are your expectations for this game? Are you, do you think it's going to attract an international audience? This is a this is a very tough um, you know thing to to, to answer mm. um, because you know a lot of people not a lot of people a very small amount of people go but is it viable for the international market and you know what <laughs> kung fu isn't viable for the international market either it's such a mystical you know eastern mm. Chinese specific thing and that how how like specific it is is what captures the international imagination i guess yeah so if we were pandering for the international market all we would have done is kind of watered down the appeal for what the actual game is meant to be so what are, what are our expectations well we hope that some people buy it just to justify 14 months of mm -hmm. absolute joy Sweet and, tears. and throwing all of our existing careers into the dream volcano as we said off air beforehand <laughs> um 
yeah, we just hope that we can keep on doing this, man. Like, uh, you know, like nobody thinks that they're going to have the job they wanted when they were 13 and become a, a millionaire off of it. We just, you know, you kind of choose career or happiness, and sometimes happiness could could, could, could keep you afloat. And that's kind of what we want. Mm-hmm. And we, we, we do have a lot of interest from expats. As it turns out, there are a lot of South Africans abroad. And um, not to sound... It's abroad, eh? Butts abroad, uh, or the sequel, but proud proud nationwide, you know. Um, but also, like a lot of people said, are you guys limiting yourself to like you know 30 year old white males? And as it turns out, no, we're not. Um, it but but not because we planned it that way, it's just people have just latched onto it, and it's cool. Mm. We're happy that they did. We didn't, we didn't, we we didn't tell anyone to. It's just like, oh, you thought it was funny, it's great. Mm. But I think as with so many good, funny genres out there, the things, I mean, talk about music and movies now, you know, you don't have to be a part of that um, that movement to kind of uh, enjoy it. Uh, there's a lot of things that we sit back and, again, we're spectators in, but a game like this just makes you, again, appreciate all of these nuances that we have as people around us. And this is South Africa 101, right? Having having kind of these boots um, personified like this. Yeah, but also it's it, it's it's South African without pandering to be South African. It's not like you know somebody sat in the boardrooms like how can we make something no, of course. so uniquely mm-hmm. South African that you know we can, we can get it you know to to scale to amazing heights you know to show like how culturally blah blah you know it's just like no it's it's suburbia it's fun mm-hmm. um, it, it's fun like it, it's something we can all immediately relate to because everyone's got a butt living on their block. Um, yeah. Yeah, and, and it's it, it's easy peasy. It's it's not a case of we're not trying to make some brand sweeping statement. We, we don't want to be the ambassador of anything local. It's like yeah, have fun. Like again, if you laugh, other people might laugh as well. That's how we see it. I know it's, it's not this like very deep kind of mantra. Not like it's a comment a commentary on you know going like well we were raised in the eighties watching action movies and we were forced well you know we were raised to think that going to Stellenbosch and getting a, an accounting degree and Marrying the hottest girl on the block and then getting a holiday house by 30 in the Eastern Cape somewhere. You know, that's not what Foot Fighter is about. Or is it? I don't know. Maybe it is deep. Anyways, <laughs> enough nonsense. <laughs> Bradley no. in the chat room says, All the V's, my brother. All, <laughs> All the, the V's. V's. See, I don't know why that's like, like I don't know why it is funny. I just know it is funny. Like when, 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 when Mo just said, All the V's, my brother. Or like, I don't know what the joke is. I just know that I laughed. I don't, I don't, understand. I don't understand the humor in this game half the time. <laughs> it's just a case of like, yeah, it's just a way. It's just it's just a way of, of speaking. I guess it's not what's yes. what. It's not it's not what's <laughs> being said. It's just how it's being said. <laughs> so anyway, this game, yeah. this game. Sorry, just uh, so this game is. I mean, largely based around Joburg, right? Uh, have you guys well, thought no. about? Have you guys thought about the other cities? Because uh, yes, I can see boots in other towns. I mean, I'm from the Eastern Cape, and boots are big there too. But they're, they're different, if you know what I'm saying. Which part of the Eastern Cape are you from? <laughs> no, let's not go into my history. I think that's better left unsaid on this show. Thank you. I'm from mm-hmm. East London. West London, okay. Slummies. Hey, Slummies, there we go. Mm. Oh, yeah, come on. Which uh, on, the, on, the, on the Osna Beach Fund could work. <laughs> yeah, look, um, I, think, I, think the next, um, I think the next thing we, we are thinking about doing uh, without giving too much away. I mean, it's a bit of a Belleville to Boxburg kind of experience. Mm. Um, so I think the next boot thing that we are planning on doing is, um, if if we do well, of course, because I mean, this all hinges on just a, a moderate amount of cost covering, um, is just to kind of, just to, uh, it's almost like a coastal tour in a way that you start off, I don't know, a West Coast and then move your way up um, to, 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 to Joburg side. So yeah, if you well, if, to just imagine well, what a coastal tour around South Africa is like, which might cover the Eastern Cape as well, if you think about it. Mm. Um, I'm not trying to like, like they like, I don't know if you know of this jewel called Kenton on sea that do, mm. uh, they call a thing called the Oxbry. And yeah. it's almost like I was sent there by accident 20 years ago so that I could one day make it a level in a game that I might make when I'm having a midlife <laughs> crisis. The Neptune's Beach Festival, that's what it was called. They were Cannon Rocks in the Eastern Cape. And then, I don't know, Arctic Boss is also like such a childhood thing. And if you look at it through like, you know, like fresh eyes, you kind of go, oh, okay, yeah, this is, this, this is funny. Like you can make a bit of fun of it. Mm. And obviously, Joburg makes fun of itself. And yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah. like, you know. <laughs> You could, you could get to Pretoria. I mean, the Durban guys were quite offended. Uh, well, not offended, but they felt kind of left out. It's like, 
you know, like, oh, we got our own books. Like, yeah, but we're going to stick to to the Joe thing for now. <laughs> it's like watching a Justice League movie and you go like, why, guys? Just just focus on one story, make that story right, and then, mm. then you have all the time in the world to do all the other, you know, good source material. Don't waste it all now. So, yes, we, we're not planning on wasting source material, but we're also not planning on using all of it, all of it at once. Mm. Plenty of material and ideas for sequels there, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. Mm. Well, Bootfighter, when did you say it's out? Around the 21st? Around about the 21st of September, yeah. Okay. Well, uh, right. as Rachel said earlier, go onto Steam. It's there and uh, click that add to wishlist button. Uh, I think that's it. You can't buy it yet, can you? It's not available for pre-order. No, but as you as it clicks on, it'll let you know it's available. Okay. So uh, head over to Steam and, and check it out. And if you haven't seen the trailer, actually you've seen the trailer because you're watching this. Um, but if you're listening to the, the audio version of the podcast after the fact, then uh, hit YouTube and search Boot Fighter trailer. It's uh, well worth your time. I suppose it's also worthwhile noting that um, we're doing our first playthrough of a chunk of the game at Pirate Fest on the 7th of September. So okay. the intention is uh, look, to have the game done. Um, obviously, we, we allow ourselves to do fixes or you know uh, whatever we want in between this time and it's at the end of September. But the intention is to have a chunk of of the final version uh, playable on the seventh of September at Pirate Fest, which I think will be a hell of a lot of fun. I mean, mm. it's, it's it's a nice crossover event. There's there's live music for the people who want to rock and uh, <laughs> and you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I don't know, people into pirates, which I'm guessing is everyone. And then, uh, yeah, there'll be some games there as well. Good stuff. Sounds brilliant. So head out, head out there, uh, head out there if you want an early view of the game. Um, but I'll be, uh, I'll definitely be um, ordering it on the 21st and uh, spending it. So I hope that's a Friday so I can spend my weekend playing it. Oh, uh, calendar. But then, okay, but Dan, can we need, going to need to do this. We're going to need to go to Four Ways and go sit in one of those pubs and with the laptop. Yeah, we're going to have to do it. <laughs> Where do the boots hang out in Four Ways? <laughs> well, we'll just follow the levels in the game. I mean, I think we can find some associations. They look close enough to some of the places I've been. We'll, we'll just drive now, here's around. A fun, here's a fun game as you can play. So you can make your assumptions as to what kind of venues you're parodying um, mm-hmm. um, and then play the level there. Yes. Have a, have a few beers. When you're done with the level, pay the tab, catch a cab to where you think the next level is, um, and then uh, because it'll it'll only reveal obviously what what the next level is when you finish the next level. And so you can make like a Joburg crawl out of it if you want. <laughs> oh cool, man! For people that don't know Joburg, that's a perfect map. Yeah, to a Jersey. Oh, uh, okay. to so the four ways. One of the levels is more like a street location, so there's no specific. Oh, no, 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 there is actually, there is a specific venue attached uh, to, um, which is not, which is based in fiction, might I add, for legal reasons, um, and on, 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 on level two. So, yeah, I, th- I think you can do a cool little Joburg crawl if you want to, if you want right. to play the game around Joburg in, so in its actual, doing. not, not real locations, of course. Mm-hmm. Don't you in. If you're in, tweet us. At. <laughs> the only problem is we have to go to four ways. <laughs> I think I've got about a gig um, of voice notes before Bootfighter even started, which is all dedicated to how much I hate four ways. <laughs> like, absolutely. We used to have meetings in four ways on Sunday mornings, and I'm like, why? Why, guys? Why, <laughs> why here? Point. It's like, it, it never ends. So did, did, you have to spend, did you have to spend additional time in four ways for research purposes? Yeah, you know, like I know enough <laughs> about four ways, and Gord, Gord has lived in four ways and uh, Sunning Hill and Bryanston for for I think most of his life, so he knows mm-hmm. a lot about four ways. I think I think it's nice when you come to a project with a little bit of ignorance and then then a lot of of of, of knowledge, mm. so that there's this little little spot in between a lot of knowledge and a lot of ignorance, which is where the kind of imagination gets to work so yeah i think we've got a nice uh, balance of all of it but yeah i know i know four ways. <laughs> quite quite well as well quite, well. quite intimate i wouldn't spend friday night in four ways though that's not something that, that, that anymore that, or no no it just <laughs> you, know, you know you walk into any of these venues um in the pine slopes the area and you walk in there and you just go oh wow this looks like a lot of work like like everyone's <laughs> trying very 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 hard it's not casual that's the thing about four ways. there's nothing casual about it it's basically it's a bit it's a bit vegasy if you know what i mean yeah um, it's very commercial it's, it's very extra 
Um, and I don't know, I'm not just the kind of person that likes to sit down and be left alone and eat, you know, with a table and nobody rubbing against my shoulder. Mm. <laughs> That's right. you know you do know what they call four ways or, or uh, i think it may have the term may have originally applied to, applied to uh to douglasdale but um i think it's now broadly applied to four ways as well the cougar yeah. national park yeah oh cougar <laughs> national park yeah there used to be that venue there on, on vitkorpen um which also has a funny name which i won't say on your family friendly podcast um what was it it was called corner house i think Oh, corner house, but you're getting a decade That's ago. That's a long time ago, yeah. No, it's not a, well, maybe a decade ago. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, like that, that is Cougar Town of Note. Like, you know, th- that's where you go to find, you know, find love in all the wrong places, you know. <laughs> all those quadruple divorcees, uh, you know, I don't know. I, I don't want to say anymore. There's a spin right. game in all of this too, if you should make notes. I, I just think that someone's husband burnt that place down. I think that's what happened, you know. <laughs> <laughs> just molotoffed it, you know, to the ground. Like, ah, at least four of my ex-wives are in there right now. You know, making somebody else's, you know, making somebody else's life miserable. Back to end the cycle, I guess. Yeah, look, in the time that I was living in that area, there was at least three or four gun incidents that I've heard of. So it was not, that was certainly not a... a You're from East London, mate. There's an 80% chance that you were responsible for each one of those gun, gun incidents. <laughs> no, 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 I wasn't. I wasn't that close to the area. Cell phone towers will confirm that. Uh, I see that both of the, the, the cats from Pirate Fest has liked, liked my comments since I've, I've given them a little punch. So thank you. <laughs> thank you, uh, Mo and Jason Mayon. You know, and uh, your festival is going to be super rad next week. So cool. Hey, let's talk about the Tool album. Let's not talk about the tool now. <laughs> tool, oh my God, you're going to get Martin excited. Is Martin online? Uh, no, Martin, you're not here. You're missing out. Yeah, I'm, I'm a huge fan of the new tool album. We can talk about it for a few minutes because it it's is... So, it, it's progressive metal for, 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 for bullies. I love it. Like, it's, I'm a bully now, so it's fine. It's like, yeah, cool, Zed. It never, it never really has to go anywhere. It's fine. I'm completely cool with this album. Um, I love it. I um, th- That final track, um, the name of it slips my mind. Tempest. Tempest. Uh, uh, that that uh, that guitar and and drumming in the second half of that song is just incredible. Uh, we're talking about an album called Fear Inoculum, which uh, which just is from dropped. just dropped from an American uh, prog metal band, and uh, it's their first album in thirteen years, and it doesn't it doesn't disappoint. Apparently, I actually really don't have an attention span. It will really disappoint. Yeah, but then you're listening <laughs> to Justin Bieber. <laughs> you know what? You know what? Don't don't. Don't, 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 don't knock don't the beaver. Sh- don't don't throw shade. We're all just out out there trying to pimp our wares and do the best we can. I mean, <laughs> well, you did right. see that Justin Bieber came out as a Tool fan a few weeks ago. I, I did, I did, and then uh, yeah, Maynard <laughs> snubbed it, and then Danny yes. Carey said, "Oh, that's fine. That's cool. Like what you like, and I'm I'm cool with like what you like." <laughs> I, I think we're all just trying to make a dent, you know. Mm. Imagine if your podcast had like two million listeners right now, people would be calling you names as well because like, oh, I don't like it because it's popular. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> True. Um, yeah, so uh, what's your favorite track on the new album? Uh, dude, you know what? I actually kind of like... Um, I just got to remind myself. I do like the Invincible track. Just because oh, that's it, very good. It, it, yeah. it is kind of... It is kind of. I hate the word meta, but it is kind of meta where it's all like about being long and tooth and... Uh, long and tooth and yes, you know, there's this trepidation about going out there and, you know, again, pimping your wares to like a much younger and more cynical audience. Mm. Um, and I, and I feel like, yeah, yeah, no, I, I get that. I get that. I, I like, it's difficult to go out there and, you know, almost be scorned for, for trying just because you're out there putting your hand up. So I, yeah. I, I relate to that track. Um, yeah. So for now, yeah, I mean, everyone goes like, Numa, but I, I like I like the one where he goes like, hey, it's cool to be a bully. I'm like, yeah, it's cool to be a bully. Yeah, cool. apparently the whole album is about aging, getting old. So I guess it's, it, it appeals to us middle-aged. Oh, Tool <laughs> album is never that superficial. <laughs> no, no. That's I wonder true. if they did it the other way around. Okay, then now again, I can't really talk about this in depth due to the, uh, let's say, the, 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 the demographic of your show. But... um. It's like they normally have a gross overkill metaphor, and then underneath that, there's there, there, there's a layer of subtlety, um, which is like, okay, this is a comment on on theology or whatever else. Yeah, yeah. Whereas this album is is like, like you know, the, the 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 comment on the surface is actually quite relatable. So now I wonder mm. if the thing, you know, the deeper meaning is actually a lot more sinister. So who it knows? might be. Yeah, who knows? Lots of that's the thing about a tool album is uh, you have to listen to it for about three years before you actually hear the whole thing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> yes, that's that, that's very much true. That that might be a comment on the length of the songs as well. All right, 
questions. Questions. Do we have questions in the chat room? I haven't looked at that in a, mo- in a few moments. Kiss but 21 equals Saturday. Okay, there we go. I can spend my whole weekend playing it. I'll buy it no, you can spend some of your weekend playing it. Uh, so we are going to listen to Tool as well. <laughs> <laughs> I can listen to Tool and play, I suppose. That'll, that'll literally cause you to divide by zero, listening to Tool and playing Bush Fighter. Like, like two, like, such contrasting mediums. <laughs> you know, I'm into... <laughs> <laughs> it's going to spiral out to, like, you know, just hearing doof doof in the distance. <laughs> ah, I'm trying to get my <laughs> the Milky Way will implode on itself. Mm. So, will uh, we be seeing any any cool merch? Because the characters that I've that I'm looking merch. at the artwork, I mean, there is so much potential there. I'm sure you guys have thought about that. Uh, we're doing a merch run now. Uh, we're doing a super secret party that we're not going to tell anyone about this coming week. Um, uh, I suppose you guys can ask us about it. Um, mm. Where, when, we'll what be, time? <laughs> we'll talk after the show. We'll talk after the show. We, yeah, we have a little super secret party happening this this week. It's not a big deal. It's more like it's not like a. It, it's masquerading as a beta party, but it's not really. It's just a case of get together. There's a bar, and we'll have some merch there, and you get to play the game. And it's just for kiss, if you know what I mean. Because um, we also need to kind of uh, feel connected. Because when you're sitting in a, in a in a little room making this game for such a long time, you. You don't know anymore, man. <laughs> it's like, eh, I wonder mm. if this will bear fruit. So it's just nice to do something before all of the expos and whatnot. So it's a mm. sort of a reprieve jaw for people that we find interesting. It's, it's actually not, and we try not to just invite our mates. We actually try to find people um, in some of the groups online um, that have been cool to us, like the, um, the Zaga people. We just said, like, hey, can one or two people come through? Maybe friends of Comic Con, like maybe you guys come through just just to come and have a hang and g- mm. give us a vibe. You know, mm. um, it's it's interesting though, like the balance between press and an audience in this exercise, because it feels like the press sometimes wants wants an ambassador, and we're not that. We're we're just making we're just making a game for for laughs. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, if the joke gets a bit old, then. Sorry, it's a joke, man. It's the unique selling point of the game. <laughs> Guys are on the train, you're not in the train. Anyway, so yeah, merchandise we will have a lot of very soon. But if there's there there to what you guys want, I mean, like the, the, the general public out there, um, like like hoodies now, it's like it's going to get warm now. So it's very expensive. And we don't, like, again, startup companies, we don't have a lot of money to throw around. Um, so if merch and stickers is what we have for now and we're going to do some caps and all Stick that kind of stuff yeah yeah, yeah. okay sound good yeah but merch yeah we'll have merch mm. underwear yes wear them <laughs> Red hot. underwear seriously <laughs> yeah <a> little... <laughs> I can think of... brand of underwear I mean, that could be amazing <laughs> for the books wearing uh, the two of your secret sockies it'll be no. Secret socks. <laughs> Secret socks. That'll be all the way up to your knee in any case with a comb in it. Oh, let's not get into stereotypes. Even though that's kind of that's kind of our business at the moment. Yeah, there'll be merch. And, and there might be parody merch as well. So yes, nice, we, we, nice. We, 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 we might have some fundy undies in there as well. If, you know, if, if the demand is big enough, put your requests in. I promise you, though, when we have these brainstorming meetings, we, I mean, we, we often do talk about merch or fake ads or fake brands. I don't know if you, on our page, we have a few fake brands as well, which we want to do a lot more of. Um, if it's funny enough, we'll just, we'll just make it. But for the most part, it's just us cry laughing on the floor. <laughs> um, about like really stupid ideas, you know. Like we want to make a restaurant called Jimmy Jimmy the Killer Prawn. <laughs> <laughs> pop up restaurant that should be amazing. Yeah. Well, we we actually want to do pop up events. It's actually something that we're sorting out now. So if you are if you if there are like gathering places where people like to a hang out and b maybe play an arcade game, we might pop up there with a little pop up bar and an arcade machine and just fantastic improv improv draw. So let us know, audience of Tech Central. Cool. Um, we should probably move on to some of the other subjects we had on the list here. Uh, let's uh, let's do that. Uh, um, Louis, you've kindly agreed to stay on and uh, provide your uh, <laughs> considered views on some of these subjects. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna skip straight Instant past. Regret. The, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna skip straight past the telecom uh, treasury story because uh, hey, it's a Sunday afternoon. We're having fun and that's really boring. So let's talk about Huawei and Google and the fact that Google has said that uh, Huawei's new Mate 30 Pro and Rechat, you are a 
user of the Mate yep. 20 Pro. I was until mine was uh, liberated gunpoint a couple of months ago. Uh, but the Mate 30 Pro, uh, which is being announced later this month, Google has said will not have access to Google Apps. Does that make it dead in the water? Well, if it doesn't have access to it, it's certainly going to put the damper in it. We've been speaking about this, you know, what do they do if they lose access to the operating system and the apps? Mm. I don't know. It's, it's, we, where else are you going to get the apps? You're going to get it from their own marketplaces. That's going to have to be what redeveloped for the for their purposes and their platform. I mean, now, here's how would we thought. get apps otherwise? Here's a thought. Here's a thought. Now, very soon, China is going to be bigger than the rest of us. I don't mean to sound uh, alarmist because yeah. I'm not. It already um, is. <laughs> uh, if you basically tell China that look, you don't have Google anymore, mate, uh, they're going to go because China China just does right. It's mm -hmm. like, all right, well, then we'll make a Google. And then that Google is going to become huge. Um, and then our app stores will then be leveraging that that platform. And we'll make it English, you know, for, for all of you internationally cosmopolitan cats out there. And then it's going to become, uh, it, it, then it, might, it won't topple the empire, but it'll definitely become a competitor. So mm -hmm. I think a lot of, um, what was the stupid phrase? Um, necessity breeds invention or whatever it is. Um, necessity is the mother of invention. Yeah, oh, no, 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 that. Yeah. So I think that if you tell, you know, one of the biggest economies in the world that, no, you can't, you can't come to this party, they're going to come up with their own party. Mm. So no, it's already wild proved wild. that they can do that. I think the main concern for most consumers would also, certainly be, sorry. how would I get Facebook and my Instagram? Huawei is the second biggest uh, mobile um, phone in the country. It's, 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 it's yeah. Samsung, then Huawei. I mean, those aren't American brands. Mm. So, you know, it's, it's like it might not happen overnight, but... You know, it's just gonna, it's just gonna default. You know, yes. iOS is slipping down, mm. um, which you know, I, I, I'm, I, I'm not applauding that fact at all. I'm just saying, like, look, if you're going to not let Huawei play with your toys or trying to play with your toys, they're going to come up with their own toys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think it's, I think it's good that um, we get another competitor in the mobile operating system market because Android is too dominant. I mean, it's got something like ninety percent market share now. Hey, that's what good. we said about the EFF, mate. Sorry, Oop, no, no, no politics on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> we could, we always talk politics on the show. You're welcome to, but um, but yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get this uh, cartoon from Germ on the screen because he uh, 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 drew us a brilliant cartoon on Huawei this week. Um, let me just add it here. You two can carry on, uh, carry on talking because I can't multitask. But I think, I think for me also the other thing with, I mean, so so they are, is it not going to be back on Android at all, or is it just going to be the apps? Duncan, do you know? Um, it's going to be running Android, but it's not clear whether it's a Google sanctioned version of Android. They may just pull it out of the, uh, so this might be that first hybrid step towards their own operating system with act well with their own marketplace. And yeah. if, if they have an emulator built into their software that can run Android based apps, then kind of problem solved. It's just a yeah. question of whether those apps will get blocked for mm. not running trusted sources of those apps or trusted versions. I don't think Harmony OS is going to be ready for, for the Mate 30. Um, if it was, I suspect they might even be trying to put it on that particular device. But there, there's Germ's, Germ's cartoon. Uh, I thought it was very good. A new logo trumped <laughs> in the foreground. <laughs> um, Louis looks like he doesn't get it. Oh, sorry. I wasn't paying attention. Oh, very good. What, what, uh, what, what's an incredible, uh, yeah. Um, what a, what, well, what a pithy uh, thing to say. In any case, uh, <laughs> I, th I think that's the point. If you don't just play with your toys, then um, yeah, you can. Mm. Um, yeah. yeah. No, we certainly know that they can do that. Um, I mean, they found the hardware is fantastic. I would certainly yeah. hate to lose Android, but I, if they can, if they can come up with a solution, mm. which the is their business model, they will. Yeah, it's unknown at this stage whether, um, you know, even if the phone ships without the Google apps, whether you'd be able to download those Google apps as a, as a user. Um, because I think, um, Rechard, you mentioned a couple of weeks ago that um, the relationship between Google and the phone users with the phone user, not with Huawei. Mm. Uh, so maybe there's a way of doing that. But the problem is if Google doesn't allow access to the Play Store, how are you going to download these apps? But, and also, are they going to be trusted, verified, and then you're going to invite a whole lot of a whole lot of uh, array of or a lot of potential for malware mm. download sites? You know, get the app here and download. Mm. But they would have their own marketplace store with compatible apps. I mean, that's how they would do it. They would want to keep that user in on their own market space. Yeah, and sign up with our store and get access to the same apps. I mean, if yeah. they're all emulated or if they're all running on the same platform, it should work. Mm. Maybe. Maybe it's all up in the air at the moment, but we'll know. We will have more details in three weeks because that's when the May thirty is supposed to be launching. But I, I predict that if there's no Google apps on there, it's not going to sell well outside of China. Mm -hmm. 
Let's talk about uh, Toyota. Uh, they um, had a press conference this week with Vodacom and, and Ultron, and they're launching a, an in-car device that was developed by Netstar, which is an Ultron subsidiary, uh, that's got an eSIM built into it, GPS. Um, it's basically a vehicle tracker with some advanced functionality, as far as I can uh, figure out. So it's got an, an, an eSIM which connects to two APNs, or network access points, on the Vodacom network, one for telemetry and the other for... Uh, providing a hotspot in your car. So when you buy a new Toyota, as of today, the 1st of September, uh, you'll get this device fitted inside your vehicle. Um, it comes with 15 gigabytes of data, which you can then connect up to 15 users to. So all the passengers in the car, if it's a taxi, you can you can share that data. Um, and then it also has this telemetry APN, which uh, will um, inform you when uh, it's time for a booking, can even apparently make a booking for you for your service. Uh, it can tell you if you're there's a problem with your battery. Yeah. It soon will be able to automatically renew your your license disc on your car. Um, and apparently there's lots of other functionality coming. Um, my, my first thought about this was, you know, this is potentially a huge invasion of privacy, especially if um, Toyota is going to be tracking everywhere I go. Uh, but apparently it's opt-in only on that, on that score. Uh, you can tell Toyota. I'm, I'm very curious. I wonder where this guy is driving to because this guy looks... <laughs> intensely troubled. You can tell by his body movement. He's very, very, very erratic. He's clearly got, you know, something heavy playing on his mind. He's probably got body in the bodies booth. in the back, yeah. <laughs> I, I think, you know, like clearly, you know, the wife is working a little bit late tonight. You know, he's mm. you know, she's not answering her phone. And he's thinking, you know what, I'm just gonna go there and just check 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 what's up. And maybe I'll take but maybe maybe I'll just take something for self defense as well, if you know what I mean. You know, look at all those lens blooms in the distance. That just shows he's maybe had a drink or two. You know, he shouldn't be behind it. I mean, the car's backwards. Maybe, maybe, he, just, maybe he's just anxious because his in-car Wi-Fi has stopped working. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> yeah, but you've got to love these stock images. <laughs> so yeah, but this, this is a troubled man. You can see, like, this guy, is, his evening is going to end up on the news, man. <laughs> it looks like a scene out of Dexter or something. <laughs> it does, it does, it does. <laughs> There is plastic in the boot. You know that for a fact. Mm. Mm. Oh, sorry. Where were we? We were talking about uh, boxes in cars that provide Wi-Fi and That's internet. exciting. Mm. It is it exciting? Answer? Is it exciting? How exciting is it really? I mean, we've all got phones anyway, and we shouldn't be using them in the car anyway. Unless we're a passenger. Does it come sound, guys? Look, I mean, mm. if you, you're going to be paying for that regardless, right? So, you know, that's not going to be free data, right? At some point, you're going to be, it's going to be extra cost on the vehicle price up front. Maybe you have to do it like this, you know, you just get the surround <laughs> sound happening. So now you can get like, you know, 360 degree audio from your box. I th I th like th this will make it difficult to drive if you're that guy. <laughs> um, but still, you know, like the audio will be incredible. Be implant directly into your brain, into your cortex in the back. Well, that actually anyway. makes me think, is there, is there potential for Bit Fighter VR? I mean, being immersed, or do you just have to go to four ways and then have Bit Fighter real life? Yeah, but I think I, th I think that if you're going to have an immersive experience with Bit Fighter, it'll be a little bit more of a horror genre. So you'll wait, you, like, you, you'll put on the <laughs> Oculus or whatever, and then you'll just, you know, the game will tell you to start on the floor, and you're just going to look <laughs> up, and you're just going to look up, and it'll just be like boots above you, and then you just have to crawl out the venue and you have to escape so you'll be you'll, you'll be the guy that accidentally glanced to look at the wrong person's girlfriend and now it's a <laughs> narcissist of survival horror based Running on for your life. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so uh how did we get from Toyota to that uh, oh yeah yeah just vr it was me i was really trying to disrupt i was trying to disrupt this conversation as, as best i could because you know i warned you <laughs> <laughs> no, please go ahead. Because <laughs> it makes makes for a fun conversation. Uh, what else we need to talk about, uh, Richard? We've got uh, the man mm. behind Boot Fighter. We've spoken about him. No, um, talk about the news. Talk about the news. Whole self fixed LTE. Oh, cell C. Yes, uh, I do have a picture for that here somewhere. There we go. Hit that button. Yeah. So cell C. A lot of people have been using. <laughs> I think he's dead for real this time. I oh, know. <laughs> just sleeping. Uh, <laughs> um, so cell C is. Uh, what are those guys doing on the tower? I told you, snipers, man. <laughs> oh, that's a, is that the telecom tower? Yeah. <laughs> oh man, the audio, the, the guys that listen to the, the podcast audio version you know, are going to wonder what we're going on about it. From someone on a, on a Foot Fighter page going, when's this being released? Why aren't you watching the Tech Central part, like, like you know, podcast people? Come on. Don't flick him off. Don't flick him off. <laughs> Rechard. Boing. 
So SLC has uh, has cancelled its agreement with Internet Solutions, um, which was a wholesale arrangement to sell LTE high bandwidth LTE. And I think a lot of people were using this. Um, the Internet Solutions would then on sell it through people like AfriHost and Vox and others um, at pretty good prices. Uh, but SLC had determined this week that uh, no, no, this doesn't make financial sense for us. Um, well, they didn't determine it this week. I think they determined it a few months ago um, and gave written notice to Internet Solutions. But it kind of leaves a lot of customers in the lurch who don't have access to fiber. Um, and uh, CLC said, well, tough luck. Um, we're pulling the plug on this. You're going to lose all your data at the end of September on certain plans and the end of December on other plans. And um, if you want an alternative, get fiber or use ADSL. Not that's very helpful, not, is it? Yeah, that's not very nice to tell customers that. I know, ADSL. it's just like this whole like, okay, well, you know, it's like we failed you and this is your problem. Um, yeah. Exactly. I mean, I was telling you the, the story earlier about like how my ADSL's cables got th- like like stolen, you know, because ah, oh, well, you know, Africa. Uh, it's like no, it's just you guys just not maintaining your stuff or mm-hmm. not bothering to figure out the problem, which is probably just somebody putting their sandwich on a button that says my my internet and only my internet <laughs> will be turned off. It's like a big button with my name on it that says internet off for Louis in the exchange. <laughs> You know, with a sandwich on top of it. <laughs> and now that man is up is up this enormously, you know, deathly skyscraper with a view of Mordor trying to figure out why I don't have internet. <laughs> view of Mordor, view, view of Telcom <laughs> Towers. Um. No, no, I haven't. <laughs> I'm busy making a game, guys. I don't have time for sightseeing at Telcom Towers. Also, it just sounds terrible. Well, you need to do some research for your next game. I did. Someone's angry. Is mm. that a hardy dog? Is that my side or your side? <laughs> I think that's my side. Um, actually, there were some hardy dogs in the trailer, weren't there, right at the beginning? Right at the beginning, yeah. Yeah, flying over the highway. <laughs> 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 you can't leave the high hardy dogs out of a game about <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know about those hardy dogs, man. It looks like they were looking for a fight. <laughs> <laughs> or in tech news. <laughs> right, I think we've actually pretty much uh, covered the news. Um, let's do our regular features. Rechot, um, I don't have a pick this week. Uh, Louis, I don't know if you have a tech pick, something you've been playing with that uh, grabbed your attention. Uh, it could be an app or it could be a, a gadget or anything, really, that uh, that, um, that that really grabbed grabbed you in the last little while. But um, while you think about that, no pressure. Rechot, what's your pick this week? So my pick is loosely right now, it's very loose related to tech, but I don't know if you've ever watched the movie The Chef uh, with no. John Favreau. He's the guy that actually uh, was the reason for the big reboot for uh, uh, Iron Man. He's kind of one of the guys that made that success story happen. Now, he directed and starred in the show called The Chef, which was just absolutely fantastic if you're a foodie and you just enjoy watching good food being made and it was a good movie too. So they have now released on their website all the recipes from the show and uh, if you watch the movie, you can you'll know the delicious uh, meals that they had on there. So if you're into that type of thing, making some food and uh, yeah, go check out the chefshow.com forward slash recipes for that grilled cheese sandwich that they have in that show, which is a winner. Sounds so, good. I'm on my way over to you for lunch afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, I've got the beer. <laughs> I discovered this amazing thing, you know, in the last week and I, it, it's just completely blown my mind. It's this, um, it's this thing. Um, I don't know if you can see it. It's just brand new, right? <laughs> Right there we go, and, and and it's and it's a CD which which I've heard of before, mm. but it's rewritable. The, the the RW says rewritable, so you can put things on it, right? And in in some cars, only the most futuristic cars, they'll have a CD player in there which will actually play the things that you put on here. But if you change your mind, you can just rewrite it and put new things on it. That's incredible. an amazing, guys. I really think that CD best pick ever. I think that CD rewritables. I, guys, I really think this That's is going to change. I think the way this, like, it's going to change where the, the, the tech industry works. I think it's going to change the music industry, guys. <laughs> can I put MP3s yeah, on there? Because if I could put all my MP3s on there, that would be amazing. Yeah, adopt now, guys, because, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's really going to take off. I mean, use your, you, you use your Bitcoins and invest in, in, in verbatim, guys. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> now, I'm just worried about why you still have those there. there. And also Steel Series. Uh, the, for some reason, these these uh, mice uh, light up like it, it, it can tell my it can tell my moods. Like now, I'm feeling a little bit um, shy. Um, We're comparing mice. 
comparing <laughs> Mish. You know, n- not an error, guys. Come on, you know, but mine's <laughs> definitely bigger. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, that was uh, that was very well uh, done in uh, uh, under pressure. So uh, thanks, Louis. <laughs> I'm going to have to go and buy some of those CDRWs now. They clearly do sound like the future. I might even just put some music on them so I can play in my car. Guys, music is this new thing, guys. You really got to try it out. <laughs> Definitely going to take off. <laughs> well, uh, I, I, it's just been invented, hasn't it? Tools just released an album. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> Right. Uh, um, I, I can make up a bunch of other nonsense as well, but um, I'm not going to because I feel like this shtick has kind of run its course. So. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, what else do we need to do? Winner and loser of the week. Uh, our winners this week are James Herbst and Andy Openshaw, who respectively are the CEO and Chief Operating Officer for Huge Group, who have just been awarded 40 million rand each in share options by their board of directors. Um, they uh, The shares uh, vest in a couple of years' time. Um, but that's 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 good moolah, good moolah indeed. Forty million rands in share options each, and our loser this week is the multi-choice group, the owners of DSTV and Mnet. Um, after they had their uh, annual general meetings of shareholders this week, and um, in two votes, the shareholders thoroughly rejected its uh, remuneration policy for its directors. Um, and uh, multi-choice has now asked for feedback from shareholders on how they'd like to see the remuneration policy changed, but um, shareholders saying, uh-uh, we don't like the way you're paying your bosses. Check this, check this. Hey, hey, we're just cool, going to cool. cover hey. up the rest. Anyway, I'm technically an employee at MultiChoice, <laughs> technically. You know what, uh, I'm not going to lie, the, re- the remuneration wasn't that bad. It's better than mm. game design, I'll tell you that much for free. <laughs> Yeah, they, they Actually, no, I need to reasons. stop charging for that information because, you know, game design's a tough country, lads. Uh, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's all piping and by butt fighter. Plug. <laughs> by the way, speaking of plugging, I'm going to give props to Yuan Slobert, who's definitely, definitely, like, like carrying the bulk of the comment section today. Yes. Vinyl is making a comeback. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's a good thing Martin's not in the list today, uh, on, on the chat room today. He would have loved the tool conversation, but he's a huge vinyl nut. Uh... You say vinyl. So you say vinyl's coming back. Yeah, well, vinyl was completely dead um, for the most part, and then hipsters started happening. And um, no, it, it's it's kind of weird. Like like the same audience that that, that likes vinyl, um, it's the same audience that likes venues that have bad parking. Mm-hmm. They think that the venue is cooler because it's difficult to, to park your car, and that's why these places in um, like what are they called, the Great Dane or. Kitchener's or whatever. That's why they're so popular because they feel so exclusive. So with vinyl, <laughs> it kind of feels like you're buying into some really exclusive market. Um, even though it's nice to skip a song if you want to, but mm. you know, it doesn't matter. It sounds better apparently. It doesn't sound better. No, <laughs> definitely it doesn't sound better. But uh, it sounds warmer because it's got more noise mm, on it. But what do yeah. I know, right? What do I know? It's just warmer because that turntable produces a bit more heat than your average. Uh, MP3 playing device. I would love for that to to, to actually be the answer. <laughs> I'd love if it was something as benign or moot as that. The rotational cycle of the LP. You you you, you, this is, you were ahead. Let's uh, let's let, let's just say that you won that. Okay. <laughs> More tech news. This is exciting. Let's talk about let's talk about nerd things. This is we've, fun. We've um we've exhausted the tech news for this week. Is there uh, something that you wanted to uh, particularly talk about? Anything that grabbed your attention? Although we are at uh, almost, we're actually over an hour already, so we should probably be signing off soon. <laughs> Why? Uh, is, is there a cloaked, shrouded figure behind your green screen saying, you have expired your time. Now you must switch off. Get back no, into we'll the pleasure dungeon. <laughs> uh, we can, oh, Rechat, what are we? Whoa. <laughs> Just magic, man. Magic. magic. Is that a green sheet you have there? Green screen, mobile green screen. <laughs> the fourth wall's been broken, guys. Clearly, clearly, this has now run its course. <laughs> <laughs> We're back on the fireworks, so uh, we should probably uh, look to start to wrap this up. Let me find the show notes. Uh, yeah, do the quiz, so we'll just leave out the quiz answers. How's that? We'll leave out. No, we must do that. Um, let's do it in reverse for a change. Which Roynet executive and CEO of subsidiary Nash? Did we ask this in the no, meeting? No, that's what I'm saying. We didn't even ask the question, so there's no point in doing the quiz. <laughs> well, Louis is asleep again. Let's just uh, let's do the let's do the quiz uh, with the answers. 
Uh, do you want to start, Richard? Okay, so you said from the top, from the bottom. Which uh, Raynet executive and CEO subsidiary Nasha Mobile is stepping down to emigrate? And the answer is Mark Taylor. Uh, and... It was Billy Joel, guys. Come on. That was absolutely <laughs> from the 1988 Billy Joel album. <laughs> stepping <laughs> down. Stepping down. Stepping down. Stepping <laughs> down. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. Hmm, got quite a good voice there. I think you might have to sing no, Tech no, Central. No, You'll no, have to no, sing Tech Central Happy Birthday at the end of the show. I, I have one and a half blocked nostrils, one blocked ear, and none of my eyes are working. So um, <laughs> but you've got a bit of a like Barry Gibb gang going on there. I don't even know who that is, but BGs, uh, I, man, BGs. I applaud you for uh, your <laughs> reference, uh, your referencing capabilities of things that are no longer relevant. Including the BGs in their pants. <laughs> Actually, Louis doesn't have access to the show notes, so uh, let's see if he can answer the questions. <laughs> you know <laughs> this is a waste of time. So. <laughs> Apple will hold a special event on which date to announce the new iPhone? And before your phone, before your game launch, uh, it'll be on on Y two K B um, when Y two K actually happens. Because the only reason it didn't happen. Is because iOS didn't instruct it to happen. They sort of the functionality of, of Y2K original vanilla even um, wasn't up to pass. So they delayed the launch, so that's happening um, on the twenty second of September. Twentieth of September. Close. That's no cigar. <laughs> Ten. Ten September. Oh, I could have uh, named every single date in the history of mankind. Uh, <laughs> chance I wasn't going to guess it. <laughs> Here's a curveball for you. Number three, whose high-profile Twitter account was hijacked this week? Was hacked this week? Sorry, I don't have Twitter. I don't even know what that is. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, the, well, you love the answer. Dick Bunderdach. You love, you love the answer. Yeah, you love uh, This is Mark Zuckerberg. No. Well, close, close in in relativity, but the answer is Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey. <laughs> There are four billion people on this planet, I think. I'm not going to go through them one by one until I correctly guess the person. <laughs> Look, we've got a lot of time on this podcast. Let's do it. The CEO of Twitter was hacked. And uh, Cell C this week left ISPs and consumers in the lurch. Uh, actually, this question is going to test how well Louis uh, was listening. Um, oh, I wasn't but, listening at all. I, I, <laughs> I think you might have been napping at that point. Cell C <laughs> this week left ISPs and consumers in the lurch by cancelling its fixed LTE wholesale agreement with which company? Cow Co op? Hang on. Cell no. C? <laughs> <laughs> Internet oh. solutions. And the final question in this week's quiz is the all-new Toyota and Lexus models sold in South Africa will come with a Wi-Fi hotspot and how much prepaid data loaded at purchase? Anybody? 1.44 megs. <laughs> we'll need a few more floppy, stiffy disks for that. Uh, the answer is 15 gigabytes. You know what? I still know how to zip and DOS, okay? So that, that counts for something, I feel. Zip and DOS. <laughs> PK zip, minus E, minus R, minus and F for format, source drive, destination drive, forward slash star dot star. Suck it. <laughs> now there's a show note worth noting. <laughs> uh, right. Uh, let's see if there's any. So, yeah, if you're a lonely tech nerd out there, just know I might be your dad. <laughs> <laughs> Apply now. Wolf man of the tech industry, eh? Jeez, no, please take that back. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you guys think that the Vikings guy did a great uh, cosplay of Steve Wolfman at Comic Con last year? Mm. Travis Fimmel? I didn't even see this. Don't know. Oh. Just, uh, yeah, Google that. Yeah, clearly, clearly it wasn't on purpose, but yeah, he did a great impression of Steve Wolfmayer. He looked like a hungover Afrikaans guy wearing a bad shirt. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Louis, it's been fantastic having you on the show. Um, and no, you heard, really. absolutely. Uh, well, if you're this on form when you've got uh, um, when you've got the flu, I, I can just imagine uh, what you'll be like when you're uh, f fully functional, if I <laughs> put it that way. Yes, you will see my final form. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you're welcome to come back on the show anytime invitations uh, open you're, uh, you're welcome to to to, to whatsapp me at 12 30 going hey do you want to be on the show um might just then, do that yeah then i'll just give you that big thumbs up icon that is the, the universal <laughs> sign of passive aggression or i'll just be on the show who knows who okay knows? You know, as long fine. as you don't give us us that germ huawei uh, logo as in response <laughs> <laughs> well now i have to <laughs> Which thing yeah. <laughs> so all right i'm gonna I, I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna you know 
I'm going to return back to whence I came. Oh, no, I'm already home. No, this is fine. <laughs> this is all fine. Travel safe. Oh, thanks. Well, thanks very much, Louis. We greatly appreciate it. And do go onto Steam and uh, wish list add it to your wish list. Wish list it and then uh, buy it. And then it when it launches, out. gift it to everybody in there. Please, yeah. that'll be nice. It'll be affordable. You can you, you either buy, it'll probably cost the same as the Steve Hoffman um, CD, and you don't want to do that. So please, just, mm. you know, you know. Money better spent, for sure. Money Definitely. better spent. Who's your daddy? Oh. And you're and thinking he, a local game developer, which is probably a better cause, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, if you buy my game and the company grows, then I can hire all of your teenagers who are now insisting that they become game developers. Because <laughs> that's a thing now. Because their father's played Boot Fighter. Hey, it's a good cycle. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm going to go now. All right. Thanks, uh, everyone. Thanks, uh, as always, uh, if you've got any feedback on the show, uh, what's our WhatsApp number, Rechot? I can never remember. 071 there we go. And we go live on Sundays at 1 p.m. on youtube.com slash techcentral. Hit that subscribe button, as Louis told you to do at the beginning of the podcast. Uh, and, uh, yeah, join us next Sunday at 1 p.m. Until then, cheers. Ciao, ciao.